That has to be the craziest thing I've ever heard, Solstice said quietly, her eyes getting wide with horror as I finished the story about the cage. Shadow, I think I understand why you look so crappy right now. No wonder you can't sleep with everything you were forced to do, the ponies you had to kill, letting Windthresher kill you. No one would be able to take that easily, Aura said just as quietly as Solstice. The airship had left the kingdom hours ago when we were flying over the Deadlands. It was a large mountain range that separated the Mideast from Western Equestria. Or the Wasteland, I guess? It took me all that time to tell them every nasty thing that I had to do to get free. I'd even gone into detail about the other part of Aquila. Why would Aquila think you'd become my lover? I mean, yeah, you aren't that bad now that I've gotten to know you and all, but I couldn't see us being a thing. Let's just say that way my barn door doesn't swing, Solstice said. With everything you heard in that story, that's the thing you're focusing on, Aura asked. Well, no. I mean, there are a lot of worse things in there, but still, I just thought it was weird. Solstice stated. Honestly, it doesn't matter anymore. It's said and done. None of it was real. I just need to get my stupid brain to realize that. I said with another sigh, lying back on the bed. Shadow, what you really need is to sleep. And not just for a few minutes here or there. You need a good night's sleep. And some food. You look like a drowned rat right now. Aura said. Thanks, I love you too, I said, still not looking at them. I'm not trying to insult you or anything, you just need to realize how bad you look. If you showed up back in New Pegasus like that and some pony saw you, they'd think that the courier really was dead and you were some pony we put into your clothes and said you're the courier. You have a reputation to keep, and ponies in New Pegasus need to know you're still you, Aura said. I don't feel like me though, Aura. Aquila took that away from me when she trapped me in my own head, I said, finally sitting up. To make things worse, now I have a lot more crap to deal with after what I saw on that crystal. What did you see, by the way? Solstice asked. It was a memory of the first children of the night. Their leader, Moonlight, was in the fall. It was the fall of Nightmare Moon. Well, that's what it was labeled as but I think it was more about this monster that was locked up in the castle at the time. I said, and told him about what I'd seen in the memory, leaving out a few things. It's a memory from over 1,200 years ago, but don't read too much into it. If that thing is still out there, then worry about it when you have to. Right now, let's just worry about getting you back to your old self, Aura said, still sitting on the bed next to me. I don't know if I can, I said with another sigh. I know you can. You just need a little help, and we can both do that for you, Laura said, looking over at Solstice. Yeah, count on us, Shadow, Solstice said with a smile. I couldn't help but smiling as well. Okay, I'll try. That's what we wanted to hear. So first things first. You need to get some sleep, Laura said, digging in a satchel. Easier said than done, I replied. Laura pulled out a small jar with a red liquid inside. Nope. Easier done than said this time. This is more medicine I got from Sheena. She said it'll help you sleep and make sure you have no dreams. We don't have much, but with a few nights of dreamless sleep, maybe your body will be able to cope with what happened and you'll start feeling better. Is that safe? I heard REM sleep is where you dream and that's the most restful part of the sleep process? I asked, taking the bottle. If it's from Sheena, then I'd say so. Just drink it and rest. Don't worry about the rest of your deliveries. I'll take care of them while you're sleeping. Aura said, getting to her hooves. I'm kind of enjoying this whole courier business. What'll you be doing, Solstice? I asked as Aura kissed me, then headed out the door. 
I'll keep an eye on you. Sheena said that if you start showing signs of waking early, or if a dream's coming through, then I have to wake you up with another potion. Solstice said. I thought this was safe. Ish. Wait, how are you going to know even if I'm dreaming anyway? I asked. It is, but she wants me to be even more careful with you. Solstice said, pushing me out of the bed to lay down. To your question about how I know if you're dreaming, it's easy. Your body language will tip me off. Now drink that and go to sleep. Yes, Mother Dearest. I smiled and drank the potion down. Oh, that's earthy. Why do all these things have to taste bad? It's like sour candy dissolved into dirty dishwater that some ponies spit in. She just rolled her eyes. Oh, shut up, and... I never heard what she was going to say after that, because right then my eyes closed and sleep finally came. It was like they said. I didn't have a single dream, or a nightmare as I slept. For the first time since I broke out of my cage, since I took back my wreck of a body, I got a full night's sleep. When I woke again, my mind felt clearer than it had over a week. My body had more energy, and I finally felt a little like my old self. When I woke, I found that I was still lying in the bed. Solstice was sleeping on the floor next to the bed, snoring as loud as Stardust does. I could feel the airship still moving with a quick pace. The sounds of the new crew moving around on deck, the shouts of Elliot as he gave orders to them, Captain Gunny's laughter, and Sunspot yelling for him to shut up. I yawned, then stretched as I got back to my hooves then poked to Solstice. She groaned, then opened her eyes, wiping some drool from her cheek. Ah, uh, hey, Shadow. I must have fallen asleep. It's fine, I said, looking at my pit buck to see what time it was. My eyes went wide when I see that I had been sleeping for about twelve hours. How are you feeling? Solstice asked, trying to wake up her body. Better than I have in a while. And I'm hungry, I said, rubbing my belly as it rumbled. Yeah, me too. What do they have on this thing for food besides alcohol? She asked, walking over to her set of power armor that was sitting in one corner. Biscuits, mostly, and some wasteland food, I said as I watched her get into the bug-like armor. I was going to ask you before, Solstice, where did you get that armor? Did Violet give you your old armor back? She nodded, lifting the visor so I could see her face. Yeah, after what happened with them while you were off being crazy, she let me have it again. Once she was back in the armor, we left the cabin and slowly walked back towards the main deck. As we did, I asked, Do you ever miss being back home? She looked over at me. All the time. Stratus is a beautiful place, and I miss my friends. Well, my one friend. But, yeah, I still miss it. What I miss the most is my parents, though. I'm sure my mom's worried sick about me right now. I smiled at that. Moms are good at that. My mom brings it to a whole new level. She acts like she's going to lose me one day. She always goes on about some curse on the family and how she can't stand to lose another foal. She said as she sighed. Uh, another foal? You mean you had a sibling at one point? I asked as we made our way over to the ship's gallery with no one attending to it. Not that I was surprised or anything, there aren't enough crew members. Not that I know of, no. When I asked her about it, she just tells me to leave things be. Either she lost a foal right after birth, or had a stillborn. I'm not sure, but if I try to bring it up, she'll change the subject and make herself a cocktail. Solstice said, taking a couple biscuits. So your mom believes there's a curse on the family? That's because Aura's family and mine are the same way. She rolled her eyes. I'm not surprised. All the descendants of the children are like that. Well, all but one, that is. Wait, you known that you're a descendant of the children of the night? I asked. She shrugged. I have known my whole life. It's no big family secret. We have old pictures in her house of my distant grandmother, Cloudy Nights, in her home. She was one of the biggest believers in the curse next to Night Stalker himself. 
odd, because I thought she lived to be really old, I said as I took some biscuits and dried apple. She did, but she also suffered a lot in her final days. She went a little nuts at the end, I believe. She was in pain for most of her older life from some strange illness. She lost two of her children to sickness, lost her first husband to an attack in the wasteland, her second husband died to assassination, and her last one, the one who she had uh, my family line with, killed himself. Mom says that one day she was found in her room dead. She'd put a bullet through the back of her head. She was almost 90 years old, and she still managed to kill herself in the end. Solstice said sadly. I didn't know she killed herself, I said. Most ponies don't. My family's kept it a secret a long time. She was very depressed for most of her life. She said as she sat down on the deck to eat. Does your family know a lot about the children of the night? I asked, sitting next to her. Not about Night Stalker or Greta, but my mom knows a lot about the other family and Thunder Lanes, too. Surprisingly, maybe, a little about Lightning Dust after Night Stalker was banished, she said. What happened to Thunder Lane? I asked. I heard something in one of my mom's memories that Greta killed him? She might have. She found him a couple of months after Night Stalker was banished. She attacked him while he was on patrol and killed his entire squad. Then she threw him into a vat of something. I'm not sure if it was taint or radioactive waste. Either way, he managed to make it back to Stratus with the help of another Enclave patrol who found him. He told them what happened while he was being taken to the hospital. Later, he died from the damage done to him from the stuff, and he was thrown in. His oldest son took over from that and tried to start a small war against Greta's Talon Company, but it didn't go far. He was pulled from power after the first attack and almost branded himself for going against the rest of the council, she explained. Damn, so Thunderlane didn't hold power for long after Night Stalker left, I said. No, he didn't. After Night Stalker's betrayal and after how Thunderhead's son acted, the Enclave as a whole passed a law that made it so Night Stalker's family and Thunderlanes wouldn't be allowed to hold power in the Enclave for at least a hundred years after that. Lightning Dust herself helped pass the law while she was in Thunderhead, and she would have lost her power too if she hadn't divorced and renounced Night Stalker before he... Solstice said. You sure know a lot about what happened back then. I said, eating another biscuit. Solstice shrugged. My mom's worked in intelligence for a long time. She's also a historian. I grew up with her, talking about things from the past. Your mom's name Fairy Glitter, right? I asked. Yeah, but how do you know that? She asked. Doorstop told me. He had me send a letter to her a couple weeks back, I said. She rolled her eyes, then cursed. Damn it, I guess you would know then. What, that door stops your uncle? Yeah, I found out that about a day before Aquila took over. I take it you knew too, I said. Yeah, I knew since I first met him. Well, sort of. I knew Mom's brother was named Doorstop. When I met him, he reminded me a lot of my grandpa, so I thought that he must be the same pony. I wasn't sure at first, though, not fully. I finally asked him about it while we were helping the cadets in the kingdom, she said with a little smile. You two are a lot alike. I don't know why I didn't see it sooner, I said. We're not that much alike. I don't practically scream at every pony, she said, giving me an offended look. I laughed. You are too. You're both brash, tough, and thick-headed, though I'll admit you are not as loud. I guess you're right, but still, I don't like being compared to him. Honestly, I don't like being compared to anyone in my family. Mom likes to say I'm a mix of her brother and her. Quick to anger, tough, but also with a soft side, too. She said with a sigh. Your mom must be kind, I said. She is, like, you have no idea. Even though she's just as strong, tough, and thick-headed as doorstop, she always tries to find the best solution to a problem. She doesn't like to yell. She'd rather talk it out with some pony than get into a fight. But if she does get mad, well, damn, she's scary. She can even make my father cower in fear, and he's the bravest pony I know, Solstice said. I looked down at my hooves. 
I wish I could have grown up with a family like that. My whole life's been about me being sick or having a quilla inside me. I don't know what a normal life is. Never really have. She nudged me with a hoot. Hey, don't get down on yourself. You can't change your past, even if you want to. You need to just look forward and try to make sure that your future is happy. Anyway, why did you ask about my mom? Oh, right. I said, shaking my head. I asked because I met a stallion in New Pegasus who said his dad knows your mom. Said something about helping her, uh, his father, out at the hospital. I didn't understand why she would be there if she's a historian and works for our intelligence. I said. Solstice rolled her eyes. You must be talking about Kidder's Fly, then. What he means is that my mom helped out there sometimes as a nurse. She trained to be one when she was young, then changed her career to what she does now, a little before I was born. She still helps out of the hospital from time to time, and has a few friends there, too. Kidder's Fly's father knows my mom more than most. She was in charge of finding intel on the whereabouts of his wife, Flassad, when she went missing 12 years ago. I don't know all the details, but I do know that Flassad's squad was attacked and something, and she went down in an explosion. For months, they tried to find anything of her, since no body was discovered. Later, she was just pronounced dead, but my mom became friends with her family. I've known Kidder since I was a filly. He's a strange pony, I said, remembering the stallion who ran the small skyport in New Pegasus. He is strange, but he's a nice buck. Has a weird fetish for robots and bat ponies, but apart from that, he's not bad, she said. Sounds like you like him, I teased. Ew, no. He's more like a good friend, and he's like 12 years older than me, so ew, she said. So no buck friend for you? I said, still teasing. What is with you in trying to set up your friends with ponies, huh? She asked, glaring over at me. Oh, so we're friends now, huh? I thought you hated me. I teased more, this time letting my smile come to my face. I mean, I guess. I haven't really thought about it. I mean, yeah, I did hate you at first. I thought after the stuff I've helped you with that we were just friends already. She said shyly. I guess you're right. I mean, you didn't have to help me back in the kingdom or help us with stardust or help when my mom attacked. I said with a bigger smile. Yeah, I'd like it if you were one of my friends, Solstice. Good, because I don't make friends often, she said with a hug. That's because you come off as a bit of a cutthroat bitch, I teased. Yeah, and don't you forget it, she said, then started to laugh. It was a nice sound, light and full of joy. I realized then that I'd never heard Solstice truly laugh before. It was nice. You know, when this is all over, I'd like to meet your parents, I said. I think they'd like you, honestly. Dad's always liked your father as a council pony, and respected him for his rank in the military. And you have this whole... I'm a poor abandoned filly sob story that would make my mother fawn all over you. She said, giving me a smile. I leaned back into the railing. Yep. It's what got me through my teen years in the stable. You're still in your teen years, yo, you weirdo. She said with another laugh. Not for much longer, I said. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, kid. She said, poking me. You're so mean. I said, pouting. Yeah, I am, she said, getting back to her hooves and stretching out, then adjusting her helmet of her power armor and pulling the visor back down. Enough talk. It's time that we did something fun. Like what? I asked. We have too much time to just lay around on the ship. I think we should get in some training. Aura's still having a hard time with her new body, and I'm sure you wouldn't be against some extra training. Solstice said, nodding her head towards Aura, who was talking with Elliot. You know what? That's a good idea, I said, getting up and following her. For the next few hours, Solstice helped Aura and I with some enclave training techniques. 
I honestly didn't know what to do. Uh, that, well, most since most of it had to do with flying and stuff like that. Though I did learn better ways to take on a Pegasus. One good lesson was one I should have figured out by now. A Pegasus's wings were their strongest and weakest point. They could do a lot because they had wings. A lot like a unicorn can with magic. They could even use them to hold weapons that earth ponies couldn't. But if you took out a wing during a fight or injured it in another way, most pegasi would be helpless. Just like if you broke or damaged a unicorn's horn, we would be helpless. Most of the time. The reason for this was because most of the Enclave learned how to fight from the air. They don't normally teach their pegasi how to fight on the ground because most Enclave don't go down to the surface. It reminded me of lessons I had from Yaksha and Mom, even Verbane, about how I had to learn to fight without my magic, just in case I found myself without it someday. I enjoyed watching Aura learn how to fight, though. She did good with a lot of the stuff Solstice was teaching her, but she still had a problem with weapons. She was born with talons and was used to having her digits to use a weapon she was trained on. Hoop to hoop, she excelled at for the most part, but put a rifle in her muzzle and she couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. I could see the killing part of the joke now. If we were attacked, Aura wouldn't be much help. Not until she learned how to fight all over again. When we finished, Aura went back to exploring. Solstice took to the air to scout the sunspot. Captain Gunny was passed out drunk on the quarterdeck, and Elliot was flying the ship. The rest of the crew members were busy with their duties. So I went over to a quiet spot on the aft of the ship and decided that it was about time I listened to the recording Laserlight gave me. I'd remembered that I had it when Solstice was talking about her family in Kidder's Fly. She told me she made a few of them, and this was one of the first ones she'd made twelve or more years ago when she escaped the Enclave. So I popped in on Mark II and started to listen. The recording was about an hour long and went over how Laser started life in her laced land. It didn't tell me much on how she ended up here, but did give me a good insight into the ways she had to adjust to her new life. From learning to fight the strange monster she ran into, to a fight she saw between the Red Talons and some friends. At the end of the recording, she talked about how she first met Yaksha when she found Coven, the same small town my friends and I went to after the Red Talons fell. Strange to think that just over a decade ago, Laser met Yaksha in a similar way to how I met Laserlight. I rather enjoyed listening to her story and how she found herself in this new, lonely life in the wasteland. When it ended, I decided I'd ask her the rest of them when I saw her again. Slipping the recordings back into my saddlebags, I stretched. When that was done, I pulled the bottle of tablets I'd gotten from Sheena and took one. So far, my magic wasn't feeling any different. But I was sure, in time, it would get better. I pulled out the notebook Sheena had given me and started to go through her findings. It didn't take long to read, but what she'd come up with was a theory that move made my hooves shake. From what Sheena wrote, the way my mom used magic was doing something to her body. From all that Aura must have told Sheena about mom's problems over the years, she was able to figure it out. Mom having problems with having a foal to the way her mane was turning gray at a young age, then to her memory loss. Mom's body couldn't take the strain from the unnatural flow of magic that was passing through her. Sheena believes that if Mom kept it up, her body would eventually deteriorate enough and fail, and she'd die because of it. The thought of that scared me. I just got my mother to start trusting me again. Now I could lose her forever, all over the strange magic she used to fuel her spells. I was going to have to show her this when I got back to New Pegasus. For now, I'd have to hope everything would work out for the better. So after putting the notebook away, I got to my hooves and went over to get some food and water. The cloudy sky was getting dark as I walked closer to the food barrels. I noticed a light in the southwest. Ignoring my stomach, I went up to where Elliot was steering the ship and asked, What's that light in the distance? The pony griffin looked down at me with a smile. Have you been away from home for so long that you don't recognize new Pegasus? My eyes widened as I realized that I didn't know where I was. In the distance, standing tall and proud, was the lucky horseshoe. It's like a lighthouse beacon to the wasteland. My wasteland telling it that new Pegasus was still there, still strong, still beautiful. 
I never once thought I would be excited to see that shithole of a city again. I looked back at Elliot, asking, How long till we get there? About 20 minutes or so. Aura should be back soon. She flew down to an LR camp. We'll be flying over soon to make your second to last delivery. Then we'll be heading towards Freedom to get the Queen her delivery, and that'll be that. Your trip and your payment bottle cap will be finished. He said with another smile. Sad, too, because Sunspot and I are going to miss you. For a moment, I just watched as the city grew closer, the rest of the strip coming into view as it did. It was amazing to see again. I couldn't wait to see how the rest of my friends were doing. I wanted to see the Queen again in Sugarbuck, then check up on the Shadow Talons and see my uncle again. Talk to Mom now that she knew I was her daughter. I wanted to hug Stardust and Wingnut, give Bite a hard time, but most of all, I wanted to apologize to Windthrasher and hope that she forgives me for all the wrongs I've committed. All those feelings died when Dora landed on the deck, panting hard with eyes wide. I ran down to the main deck, asking Nora, What's wrong? The NLR camp is gone. Every pony there is either dead or fled. Steel Rangers attacked only a few hours ago, from what I can tell. And Shadow? Sapphire's there right now, with at least 50 or so of her Steel Rangers, Nora said. I only got away because I caught them by surprise. They thought I was Enclave of Open Fire. I ran to the railing, and sure enough, not far ahead of us, I could see the smoky remains of the camp and steel rangers roaming around the area. A few of them pointed up at the ship high above. One even tried shooting a rocket at us, but it missed. We were outside of its range. Either that or his missile launcher was crap. I looked back at Aura, asking, How do you know Sapphire's down there? Nice saw her. She had her helmet off. She changed her main color again and stuff, but I know it's her, Aura said. I need to contact the Shadow Talons. The Steel Rangers are too close to our new territory, and we haven't made a treaty with them yet. Fuck this, I said, lifting my Mark II and switching to the intercommunication system. This time, I didn't contact Byte. No, I picked the other channel on it. Pip Buck 3000, Mark II SL. I brought it to my lips once the connection was made and said in an angry voice, Elder Sapphire, I hope you're getting this. This is Shadowstar, and I think it's about time you explain to me what the fuck happened with Elder Apple Slice. A second later, Sapphire's voice echoed out of the Mark II. Shadowstar, I could have sworn you died over a week ago. I guess Mr. New Pegasus isn't always right when he reports. Cut the crap, Sapphire. Tell me what you did to Apple Slice and why your Steel Rangers attacked the NLR camp, I said angrily. Oh, I'm guessing you're close. Are you in the crappy-looking airship overhead? I'd say I'm surprised you'd take a ride from a nutcase like Gunny, but we are talking about you. You really aren't the best mindset after all the crap you've pulled since I last saw you, Shadow, she said, her voice also filled with a bit of anger. You don't have the right to call me out for my wrong, Sapphire. You're the one who killed the Elder. And for what? Power? I yelled. Don't talk about things you don't understand, child. I have good reason for killing Apple Slice. Trust me, if you knew what she was really like, you'd have done it too. As for me taking power, that was more Star Paladin Noodle Cup's idea, not my own. At least I haven't gone around destroying towns or buildings because I'm angry at the world, she said. Fuck you, Sapphire. I don't need a pony like you telling me off for that shit. I have enough guilt over both times I used that weapon, I said. Maybe you do. Maybe you don't. Still, it sounds like we need to talk. How about you come down here and we can talk this out like adults? One on one, she said. I'd rather blow you up with the plasma cannons on this ship, I said, growling with each word. Shadow, if you don't come talk to me now, I'll have my rangers blow that thing out of the sky. Then if you survive the crash, we'll talk. Or you can make this easy on yourself and meet with me. I know you, what you did to box tape. I, what happened to cartwheel? Why you stole that super weapon? And when we're done talking about that... 
I want to know where that filly from Trotston is, because she has something that belongs to me, she said, her voice full of anger. The Mark IIs don't belong to the Steel Rangers. You're lucky you have that one that you do. Now answer me, or I'll just let my friends kill all of you, and then take back the Mark II I gave your elder in the first place, I yelled. A deep, menacing voice came back this time from Sapphire, as she said, Meet with me on neutral grounds, or I'll have the Steel Rangers I have stationed in Freedom destroy the new Shallow Talons base, and make sure they kill every griffin that tries to escape. I know how much you care about the runaway Red Talons and the Queens. I'll go after them next, and so on, until Freedom is run by the Steel Rangers. I may even go pay a visit to that Alicorn colony in Frosty Summit. I'll admit, I've always wanted to kill one of those things before. Now, what do you say, courier? Do you want to dance? Or do you want to talk? Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Explorer. From your many travels, you've sure got a lot of locations marked on your map. Your love for travel has caused you to also miss a few things along the way. So Stable Tech has taken the liberty of adding all undiscovered unique locations to your map.